Hi guys, my name is Veit, I'm from Germany. Um, when I told Sam that I've been to 100 countries, um, he asked me to tell some crazy travel story. Um, so I'm going to talk about a whale fishing village in Indonesia. Um, I've actually been there a long time ago, 20, well, 23 years ago, my first trip in Indonesia. Um, whenever people ask me what's the best place to travel, I often answer Indonesia, because Indonesia has many different islands and they all have different cultures and there's like amazing volcanoes, amazing scenery, and it's a wonderful country to travel, it has a lot of diversity. Um, when I was there in 1998, um, we didn't have smartphones yet, I was traveling with a big lonely planet, a um, guidebook, and in like one page I saw like a tiny little note that said on that island somewhere in the east of Indonesia there's a, fish, um, a village, a fishing village where they hunt whales. Like what? They hunt whales? What the fuck is that? So um, yeah, I, I, I set out to go there. Um, Pass, Bali, Flores, Lombok, Komodo, all the way at the end of that island chain um, to get to the island itself and take a ferry, of course. And then to get to this village, um, you have to take a truck three hours into the mountains and then um, walk another three hours like through the forest and down into that village. The island is volcanic, so the, the slope is very steep. And uh, in one bay, there's a village um, of fishermen who have been living there for many hundreds of years and also since many hundreds of years they hunt whales. Uh, the island is uh, in front of the Straits of Timor which is very deep also because of volcanic. So whales pass pretty close to shore on their migration path and so what these guys do is they, they have wooden boats. Um, every boat has maybe a crew of 10 guys something like that and they have rows and so every day at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, just around sunrise they get on their boats and go out to sea and try to spot whales. They have one guy with a spotter, he's always looking out. Um, and as, as a tourist, I mean, it was no uh, tourist recreation there. Um, I went there with a German guy I'd met um, and we slept in the, the house of the teacher who would rent out to people like us who wanted to come and see that. Um, so yeah, you could go with them. You had to give them something like cigarettes, you know, give them cigarettes so they could take you. Um, and so yeah, we went with them. Um, uh, my buddy, he got really seasick after just a little bit. Kind of like Sam, he told me a story that he also got very seasick on the boat here in Thailand. Um, so yeah, he was puking over the, the side of the boat. I was, I was, I was fine, it was beautiful, you know, a nice island in the background, blue sea. Um, and so what they normally do is, when they spot a whale, um, they row really fast to the whale, and then they have a harpoon, and then like one guy from the front, he jumps onto the whale with a harpoon, and that's how they catch the whale. It's crazy to imagine that people are basically catching you know, whales with their bare hands. They're not like these Japanese idiots or you know, like big ships or anything. It's really wooden boats, and they roll the whale, and then you know, it takes often hours until they spoon the whale, like hunting the head, blah blah, and then they bring it on the shore. And they actually have an exception from the International Whaling Commission because they've been doing it for hundreds of years. That's their source of food. Um, what they do with the whale, they bring it on land. Then they have a, like a, it's kind of like a drawing. Um, so everybody in the village gets a part of the whale. And the drawing it says, so the owner of the whale gets this part. And the guy who spot the whale gets this part. And then you know, the teacher gets that part. So it's divided um, among the village. And it's kind of their only source uh, of, uh, of protein protein and fat, um, so they, they actually dry some of the uh, whale fat, like it's dried, um, and then they barter with the village to the high up the mountains where they can grow stuff, um, where they can grow fruit or corn or you know, other vegetables, because there the soil is so steep that they cannot grow anything, like they don't have any fields or anything like that. Um, and so they barter, they, they change the whale fat, the dried whale, um, the villagers that are further away. Um, I actually tried that dried whale, um, it was disgusting. It tasted, <laughs> it tasted like an old part, really no pleasure to me. But you know, you have to try everything you want. And so they catch about, um, I think three, more or less an average three whales per year. So it's not, you know, it's not like regular. Like if they catch a whale, they're really lucky, then they can go with it, they get a lot of meat, and you know, they can survive for another year. Um, the day we went out, um, there were a lot of dolphins on the sun. So a lot of, like really a lot of dolphins spinner dolphins, so the dolphins that jump out and then crash back into the sea. Um, and they were everywhere. So I asked one of the, because I can count them, I asked one of the guys in the boat to estimate like how many, and he said 700. So all of a sudden there were 700 dolphins around us. 
and they catch them too. So um, they caught that day, I think it was three dolphins. Um, obviously, I don't like you know, hunting dolphins, I love dolphins. Um, I spent one year at sea, I've like, seen dolphins everywhere in the world, I really love these animals. On the other hand, I understand that they have to eat them, like right, somehow, so yeah, they caught three dolphins that day. And with the dolphins, they do exactly the same thing as with the whales. They went into shore, and women come down, they cut them up on the beach in the surf, you know, put them on little strings of, um, like, stuff like, stuff like from the trees, you know, they just put them in the, the pieces of the dolphin uh, on those strings and wash them, and then, you know, they take them to their houses and cook them and eat them. Um, that day, uh, the teacher also got his part, so we also had night and uh, and I tried it. It tasted like um, red, it's red meat, so it tasted like deer. Now, I mean, in those days I didn't know it, but nowadays I know that dolphin meat is something you definitely shouldn't eat because it's very toxic, it's very contaminated with all kinds of pollutants nowadays because the sea is so polluted. Uh, but yeah, it was a very, very interesting experience um, to, to see how people live after hundreds of years even to this day, you know, by rowing out and hunting ways. So that was one of the most um, most interesting, I would say, travel experience and one of the most interesting locations of people. Also because nothing to do with all Whenever I tell this story, people are like, oh, but really, I've never heard it. In fact, later, when the internet started, you know, becoming a thing, I went online and I tried to find information. The first years, I couldn't really find information, more information about the village. Now, if you Google Lama Lera, that's the name of the village, you can find information. There was, like, a, I think, a National Geographic report. So yeah, if you're ever traveling in Indonesia, I highly recommend going there and checking it out. And, um, yeah, support the villagers there and see how they do. That's basically that's my message. Um, also, like for any kind of travel you do, always try to be a go to always, um, you know, try to live with locals, try to spend time with locals, don't stay in hotels. And, um, yeah, learn from them and see how they live and see how amazing our family is. That's it.